Good morning everyone, today we're going to build a simple PowerShell menu system like this where we can go and press numbers like for example print date, like for example list processes by pressing number 2 and pressing enter and for example we're also going to do a display of disk usage, press 3 and see that as well. So we'll have a look at how to build these very basic menu systems to run some commands in your PowerShell environment. So stick around, this is a bit of quick PowerShell. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is go and build out the PowerShell menu so it actually displays correctly. So let's do a function for that. Uh, let's do a quick function called show-menu. And within this, we're going to set some parameters. So let's do a very quick param block. Param block. And inside this param block, what I want to do is I want to put the title of my menu. So we're going to declare this as a string value. We don't technically need to do this in PowerShell, but it's always a good idea to declare your variable types. And let's go and call this dollar title is equal to main. Uh, let's call this main menu. Okay. Um, now what we need to do is actually build up the structure of that menu. So we've got a show menu section. That's good. Let's go and build up the structure. This is just text. So we'll do a clear host. So that's going to clear down any of the current things in the shell. And we're going to do a whole bunch of write hosts down here. So, right, so we're going to clear host. The first thing I want to do is I want to put some equal signs in here, do a title, and then put some more equal signs in on the end. Write that out. That's fine. We can put this on the bottom as well, just to kind of frame what we're doing. And then we're going to add in some of these elements. So number one was going to be called uh, print date print there print date I can't type this morning print dates uh, print date is dates is fine uh, let's do uh, number two is going to be uh, list processes last processes last 10 and let's do number three is going to be uh, disk usage usage all right and number four is going to be quit which is going to be Q. Uh, right, so what we need to do here, not number four, we'll put a big Q on there for quit. Okay, let's get rid of that final right host down there. We should have a very basic menu system here. So if I go and run show dash menu at the end of this, show dash menu, and we go and run that in the shell, we should find, whoops, right host is not recognizable as a command. It's because I need to put a space here and a space here to make that work. Let's go run that again, and I should have a menu. Great. But the menu doesn't actually do anything at the moment. So we're going to put putting in these elements like one, and it does nothing. So we need to link that up to something now. So we need to add in some sort of statements to be able to run this code. So for example, if I want to do something like print date, what kind of code am I going to need? Well, let's just go and create a new PowerShell file over here. We'll call this file testing.ps1, and in here we can can do things like this. So get process, select object first, 10 name CPU, go and run that. Okay, great. That's fine. Uh, maybe, for example, I also want to get the current date. What's that going to be? Something a little bit like this. Write host current date with the command of get dash date. I guess it gets me the get date. That's fine. The, the final piece of that puzzle down there, though, the disk information is going to be a little bit more complicated. Uh, so this is going to do a get PS drive, PS provider file system. It's going to run through and display all my drives, but it's going to extract things like the use, the free, and the total spaces down here and round up all that information correctly for me and display it as gigabytes. And then it's going to display that that as the name of the disk, the total size of the disk, the use space of the disk, and the free space of the disk. So if you go and run that block of code on the other hand, this is the kind of output we get. Now what we really want to do is we want to crunch through each of these blocks of code uh, dependent on uh, what people actually press inside the menu. So they press one, two, or three. Now we could do that in a couple of ways. We could use something like an if and an if else statement down here. So if we said, for example, you know, um, standard if statements. So if you do something like $x is equal to red and you say something like if dollar x is equal to red we can go and run this block of code so run something like this run something like is red mm, is red okay uh, whatever it might be you could also do on here else ifs as well so you could do something like else if uh, the condition of maybe dollar x is equal to blue 
then we can go and run a block of code that says blue. Now this is fine, but it doesn't kind of scale very well. Uh, first of all, this is working in series, so it's doing an if, if else, if else, if else, if else, and if it hits a condition, it's going to stop and break at that very at that condition. So if we hit red, it's going to be red. If it hits blue, it's going to hit blue, and it's going to break out the rest of the list. Also, it's relatively inefficient when you get large amounts of ifs and else ifs together. So there's another way of actually doing this. Instead of doing um, ifs and else ifs, we can actually use something called a switch statement. And switch statements are quite important for building out menu systems down here. So examples of switch statements would look, instead of doing it like that, if I get rid of this block of code and place this in here, they look a bit like that. So in this case, they kind of work a bit like an if, else, if, in the sense that there are multiple conditions down here. We've got red, blue, green, and default, which is if it doesn't match any of the others, we can actually execute this block of code. So in this case, our color is equal to red. So if we go and run this block of code, you'll find that it writes out the color is red because it's matched that condition. The difference is that it's evaluating all of these conditions in one go. So it doesn't work through each of them in turn like an if statement actually would. This is going to be way more efficient for what we do. The other thing we can do with this is we can actually add extensions to this switch if you look at the documentation we don't have to match things directly we can do matches by things like regex we can do multiple matches and we can do um, uh, we can do kind of fuzzy matches uh, within that switch statement as well so very 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 flexible what we need to kind of do though is we need to kind of get our code into one of these switch statements for it to actually kind of work correctly so what we need to do is we need to get some more information going on in this test menu so we're building the menu but we need to build the function around it um, to actually execute things. So let's do a function main. Okay, so this function is going to be called main. That's fine. And the parameter options for this, uh, we don't actually need any parameter options, but we want this to actually run continuously. So what we do need here is a while loop. So we need a bit of a while, uh, while true loop to make sure this is actually going to be permanently running. And inside this while true loop, what we're actually going to do is we're going to do our show menu down here. So we're going to take that show menu block and pop that inside there. So it's going to be showing our menu out. But with our menu, once that's actually showing to the user so they can see which selections they want to make, we want to actually have some form of input down here. So we're going to go paste in the input of read host, please select an option. Great, so that's going to populate our input. And we're then going to need a bunch of switch cases. So let's take a switch block down here and let's paste in a block of switch code. So this is what our switch is actually going to look like here. So very quickly, we've got, for example, our switch is going to be dollar .input. Um, and if somebody selects one, it's going to be writing the host of current date. If it's select two, it's running that block of code. If it's selecting three, we're running that block of code. But remember, we want to kind of modify three so that displays things a little better. Let's take our code from here and let's paste that inside there into three to make sure that block of code runs quite nicely and more to the point displays our disk information quite nicely. We have a queue there, which is going to put a break in, which is great. And our default is going to say write host invalid option, please try again. So if somebody tries to put something in that's not one, two, three, or Q, um, it's going to tell them this is not good and you want to go and re retry that again. So another thing what we want down here is we want an any key to continue as well. Now, if you actually want to do an any key inside PowerShell, you need to use something, well, a kind of outside PowerShell, to be honest. You need to use this host.ui.rawui.read key from the .NET framework, and that's going to be any key. This is essentially the any key um, on your on your computer. So you can press the any key to continue, and what's going to go do is going to loop that in. So what we need to do is then start that main function at the end. So the main function, remember here, is actually going to be calling, once this is running, it's going to be calling the show menu function, which is going to write that menu out to the system, display it in the shell for somebody, and then allow somebody to select, using the switch case statement down here, different blocks of code, however they actually want to run, well, whichever block of code they actually want to run. So if we go and scroll this up here, run that, we should have our very basic menu system running in the shell. So if I press 1 to print dates, I'm printing dates. If I press 2 to list processes for the last 10, this actually has a bit of a panic here. It's trying to list the processes, but it's not returning it fast enough. If I run it a second time, it does actually run. If I put a sleep statement in for a second, that should catch it. Um, if I put a disk usage in here, there's our disk usages. So we are now fully complete. We have a menu system that's actually built, a single tier menu system. You can nest these, you can put menus inside menus if you really want to, if you're building up larger sort of PowerShell tools for your environment. But that's how you build an incredibly basic menu system to make your PowerShell code readable and usable by people who aren't used to looking at PowerShell. 
Hope you'll join me next time for some more quick PowerShell. And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.